Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for January 23rd, 2015. Happy Friday out there. End of the work week. We start off the weekend rather stormy with a winter storm on the way for the northern mid-Atlantic. Now, if you're on the coast, this is pretty much going to be a rain event, but the morning and the evening tomorrow is going to be a bit icy and snowy. In the interior, more snow, but not exactly a lot of snow as the heaviest precipitation will be focused along the coast. So let's break down this storm. First of all, our observations this morning range from the mid to upper teens over the interior, lower to mid 20s over the western suburbs of Philadelphia and New York City, and mid 20s to lower 30s along the coast and in your urban areas. Clearly where the winds have died out and where skies have cleared, temperatures have plummeted. However, your urban heat island is well in effect in Philadelphia and New York City with temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s. Winds again from the west and northwest at around 5 miles per hour. On our radar, well, you can see our big storm on the way. It's right here over the southeast, and our polar disturbance also diving south through the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest. The interaction of these two disturbances will lead to a significant winter storm, but the timing and the lack of blocking, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, will lead to a changeover to rain along the coast, while the interior will deal with a mix of snow and sleet at times before going back to all snow tomorrow evening for all locations. And that is pretty much when we'll see most of the accumulation with this storm. So as you can see, we have plenty of moisture with this storm to work with. On the latest surface map, this high pressure system is a very key observation because this high pressure system, one, is anchored over the Ohio River Valley and two, is shifting off the coast. So what that basically means is that your cold air source is no longer being supported by higher pressure. So as a result, the ability for warm air to rush into the coastal plain is enhanced because there's nothing to stop that warm air from driving into the coast and into the coastal plain. If this high pressure system was focused, let's say, around Maine, this would have been a completely different forecast. But of course, it would also be a completely different 500 millibar pattern. So, as always, when you have to watch these winter storms, the smallest details matter when forecasting these winter storms. On the latest water vapor satellite picture, you can see our very strong subtropical disturbance here along the Gulf Coast picking up plenty of moisture. And then here's our polar jet stream. Now, this storm right here is around 50 north and 50 west. So you might be saying, Stephen, there's our blocking. Not exactly. Because of our upper level low here, it doesn't allow the heights to build over Greenland. And so therefore, our high pressure system is instead focused here. Notice where all the red and black is, that's sinking air. That's convergence and confluence. If this was focused here, totally different forecast, a snowy one at that, and a major winter storm would have been uh, definitely impacting the entire New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan areas. Instead, what we have here is this storm exiting into the Atlantic, this storm lifting north, this disturbance interacting with this storm, slowing it down just a bit, but not in time to support a transition to all snow for the northern mid-Atlantic. So as a result, we end up with a bit of a rainstorm along the coast rather than a snowstorm for the region. This storm will again move quickly through the region, and by Sunday morning, everyone will be trying out with scattered cloud covered by the afternoon on Sunday. So our worst day of the weekend is definitely going to be on Saturday with this storm. On the infrared satellite picture again, we have our low pressure system rapidly developing. And look at this lifting here. See all this blue, yellow, and orange? That means the cloud tops are becoming very cold. We have some thunderstorms with this storm. So this storm is definitely energetic and definitely has plenty of uh, latent heat energy to work with, which basically means the storm has the capability of really intensifying off the New Jersey coast as the model guidance is showing. So let's take a look at the model guidance using the European model guidance. Uh, from the Penn State Ewell website. Again, for today, high pressure will be exiting off the coast by this evening. Notice our high pressure system is off the coast. That leads to a southeasterly wind developing. Of course, that is a warm wind. 
Temperatures today will range from the mid to upper 30s for highs. Lows tomorrow as the storm lifts up through the region will range from the mid 20s over the interior and upper 20s to lower 30s along the coast. Look for snow to start off in the morning and then change over to rain along the coast as this warm air builds in. Then as the low pressure system departs in the evening, that rain will change over to snow. Look for high temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s throughout the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, mid to upper 30s over the interior. Once that storm exits, high pressure will be in control for Sunday with temperatures averaging pretty much near normal for this time of year. Lower to mid 20s over the interior, mid to upper 20s along the coast, high temperatures in the mid 30s over the interior, upper 30s to lower 40s along the coast. On Monday, a clipper will move through with snow showers and some light snow. I know that there's some advertising this as a potential for a more significant snowfall. There's just no blocking to support that solution. All right, There's nothing here to slow this clipper down. So it moves pretty quickly. It does intensify over the coastal waters, but it doesn't happen fast enough to produce a significant snow, snowfall for the region. So look for sky snow showers, a period of light snow. It could be a one to three inch type snow event. First, we'll get the uh, storm on Saturday out of the way, and then we'll deal with this clipper on Sunday uh, for the Monday morning forecast. Again, Monday morning rush hour probably won't be very pretty with some periods of light snow, but not a heavy snow event at this time. So that storm exits out into the Atlantic. And then finally, we have high pressure and control for Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, it's tranquil weather conditions for the most part, and also for Friday, sky cloud covering, yet chilly weather conditions. We're looking at temperatures on Monday and Tuesday, low temperatures in the single digits to mid-teens, high temperatures in the lower to mid-20s. And then finally on Wednesday, we moderate just a little bit. We're talking about single digits to lower teens for lows and mid-20s for highs. So when we get out of the lower 20s, we get into the mid-20s. And then on Thursday and Friday, we get back a little bit closer to normal. Again, with sky cloud cover expected. Temperatures in the lower to mid-teens for lows. High temperatures in the mid to upper 30s for highs. Then we're going to have to watch out for a storm yeah, possibly around the start of next week. Now one slight change here in the forecast, this ridge building into Greenland, we have to see whether this actually evolves or not. If this slight negative NAO pattern tries to develop, then the storm on Monday could be rather interesting. Notice we have high pressure to the north of this storm, we have a nice little blocking setup trying to develop, and we have our nice little pressure system right along the southeast coast, and certainly plenty of Arctic cold air. Not ready to buy into it yet. I've seen this way too many times to buy into the negative NAO idea, but it is something to keep an eye on moving forward. Just to break down the forecast for Saturday, we'll zoom in a little bit. For the far northern interior, we're talking about Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, Poughkeepsie. Look at anywhere from 1 to 3 inches of snow from 1 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Again, you're going to be on the outskirts of the uh, steady snowfall on this one. So uh, it's only looking at 1 to 3 inches there. In your dark blue regions, that's uh, Reading, Lancaster, Allentown, uh, up towards uh, northwest New Jersey, uh, through the central Hudson River Valley, and up towards Hartford. Generally, I'm looking at three to six inches of snow, up to a tenth of an inch of ice. That's pretty much sleet here. And that's going to range anywhere from 1 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, tomorrow. Then we're going to get a little bit closer to the coast. We're looking at uh, just north of New Haven, basically central Connecticut, through Yonkers, talking about New York City, Newark, back down through Trenton, just north of Philadelphia and the western suburbs of Philadelphia. Looking at one to three inches of snow, I think most of the snow is going to probably set up at the end of the storm as the rain snow line crashes to the coast. So you start off with snow, quickly go over to a sleet freezing rain mix. That's where you get your ice potential up to a quarter of an inch of ice, mainly in sleet, but we're going to watch the freezing rain aspect as well. Then we go over to rain 
anywhere from a, a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. Could be more if we get those heavier bands pushing a little bit further north. And then again at the end, one to three inches of snow. Now, as we get closer to the coast, we're going to see some very heavy precipitation focusing. So I'm looking at anywhere from, in the morning hours, a trace to about 500th of an inch of ice. It's pretty much in sleet. Again, a trace to an inch of snow, not exactly a major snowmaker uh, for Philadelphia and Point Zeese, and also for the eastern suburbs of New York City and coastal Connecticut. Looking anywhere from a quarter to a three-fourths of an inch of uh, rain out of this storm. And then along the coast and over southern New Jersey, where we get the heaviest precipitation, uh, looking for a half an inch to almost an inch and a half of rain, about an inch and a quarter actually. A trace of ice and a trace of snow uh, at the start and the end of this storm as it moves through. So again, if you're in the interior, look for a moderate snowfall event. For the coast, it's pretty much a rain event, and in your major cities around I-95, a little bit of an icy mix uh, at the start of the storm and a little bit of light snow at the end. That is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Thank you for following NYNJPA weather, and as always, stay safe out there.